So today I want to talk a little bit about how do you create a model game project in Visual Studio if you don't have the templates for model game or that just the templates aren't available. Microsoft recently released Visual Studio 2022 and currently there are no templates for Visual Studio 2022 available. So I want to go through the process of how do you step-by-step -step set up a desktop model game project if you don't have the templates available. So there are basically going to be two parts here to, to setting up a model game project. Uh, the first one is we want to bring in the NuGet packages for the model game library into our application or into our project. And then we're going to want to set up the content builder file and also the content uh, builder editor from model game that will allow us to add content to our project uh, like textures, sprite fonts, and audio. So first thing is install Visual Studio 2022. Um, here's what I have installed for my Visual Studio, but uh, I think the only one you're really going to need for uh, what we're doing here for model game desktop applications is this .NET desktop development. And that's going to give you the uh, SDK you'll need for creating model game projects and for using the, um, the model game content builder editor. Okay, and we'll get into that here in just a moment. But for right now, here's what I have installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open Microsoft Visual Studio 2022. We're going to create a new project. And I found it's easiest to create a console application. Click Next. I'm just going to call this, uh, for our purposes, the Mono Game uh, Desktop App. Select your folder, and we're going to click Next. So I'm just going to pick the latest version here, .NET 6.0, and go ahead and create our application. So here we have just a basic console application. It's not going to do anything except for print hello world out there. We're in the program.cs file. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And I want to create the entry point for my application. So let's go ahead and create the class and the uh, static main function that will show the entry point for application. And then we'll start moving into how do we get mono game set up in our application. Uh, so first of all, let's make the namespace. And I'm just going to call this the same as our project. Let's create the class um, that's going to contain our main entry point. And I'm just going to call this program. OK, and then we have the main entry point. It has to be a static void function called main. And I think that's everything we need right now. So if I run this, we'll just get a basic console application. Doesn't do anything mono game yet, but let's go ahead and work on that. Let's get everything in here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is go to our dependencies in our project. We're going to right click on dependencies and we want to manage the NuGet packages. Let's go over here to Browse, and we're going to search for Monogame. And there's two things we need. First of all, we want this Desktop GL, the Monogame Framework Desktop GL. Let's go ahead and add that to our project. Click OK. OK, now if we expand the dependencies uh, portion of our project right here, and then go to Packages, we can see we have the Monogame Framework Desktop GL in our project now. And the other one is we want to be able to build content or add content to our game. And so in order to do that, we need the content builder. And if you look down here, the model game content builder task, that's the other one you want. So go ahead and add that to your project. Click OK. And now over here, you can see we have the content builder and we also have the desktop GL. Those, so those are the two things we want right there. OK, so that's everything we need as far as our NuGet packages. I'm going to go ahead and close that window. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up just like the templates do when you um, use a template to start up Mono Game or to create a Mono Game project. And so I'm going to add a Game 1 class. Okay, and the Game 1 class is where all of the action is going to happen or everything starts up and or your Mono Game application. So let's right click on our project. We're going to add a new class and we're going to call this Game 1. Okay, we don't need any of these um, namespaces brought in quite yet. But I do want to bring in the namespaces for Mono Game, okay? And that's Microsoft XNA Framework. And I have two other ones I want to bring in to make sure we have everything we need. So, uh, so from the framework here, let's go ahead and bring in the graphics and also the input. So now Game 1 is going to inherit from the game class from Mono Game. Let's go ahead and create our constructor. So Game 1. And then since we're inheriting from Game, we'll go ahead and call the base class constructor. All right, and then we just need to override some functions from the game class so we can so we can actually do something. So first one we want to override is the initialization function. Uh, let's override the load content function. Uh, next, the unload content function. And then the last two, we want the update function, and then we want the draw function. Okay, I think we're pretty much almost there, actually. 
the game class won't actually run if you don't have a graphics manager created in your game class. So uh, what will happen is if we try to run it like this, it'll actually throw an exception saying there's no graphics device uh, currently defined or being used. So right here, let's go ahead and make a private field for our game class. This is going to be a graphics device manager, and I'm just going to call this graphics. Then inside the constructor for our game class, we need to go ahead and create the graphics object. So this will be a new graphics device manager, and we're just going to pass in the game class that we created. Now inside the draw command, it's not actually doing something. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here just to so we have something on the display. So let's get the graphics device object, and we're going to tell it we want to clear, and then we'll pass in a color. Now XNA, they normally use the cornflower blue, so let's just go ahead and throw that in there. Okay, so we have that. Now we need to go back to our main entry point of our program. So right now, it's not actually calling the game class or creating the game at all. Let's go ahead and create the game, or let's uh, let's create the game and let's run the game. Okay, so we're going to make a game one, and we're wrapping it in a using statement to make everything gets disposed of properly at the end. And then all we have to do in here is just tell the game that we want to run. Okay, call the run function, and I think we should be good to go from there. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, there we are. And you can see it, it still has the console application running in the background there because this is a technically a console application that then runs a mono game application right here in a window. We can get rid of that very easily. And in fact, we'll go ahead and do that now. But you can see the, the mono game app is running just fine. We have the cornflower blue being cleared right there. We'll go and close that. And let's go ahead and change our project now. So we don't really want the console anymore. So let's go ahead and right click on our project. We're going to open the properties. At the very top here, we have an output type. We're going to change that from a console application to a Windows application. And we can close that and let's run it and just see what it looks like. OK, there you go. And you can see the console is no longer being opened. We just have our main mono game application right there. So OK, so that is basically the first part. Uh, the other thing is we need to set up the content builder. So we're going to want to be able to add assets to our application. And uh, mono game uses something called a content builder. Now, technically, we don't have to use the content builder. We could load everything ourselves, but I want to set this up just like it would if we were using the template. So let's go ahead and set up the content builder now. What we want to do now is get a content file into our project that we can use with our content builder. But we need to install the content builder itself. So the next thing we're going to look at is how do we actually install the content builder for Monogame, and then we can use that to create a content builder file for our project. So I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to search for the uh, mono game content builder editor. Okay, so MGCB editor. And the first one that comes up should be this M MGCB editor mono game documentation. We're going to click on that. And if you scroll down here, it has information on the content builder editor and then also installation instructions. And okay, and what we're going to do is actually use the .NET CLI to install this. Okay, and that's the command line interface. So right here, it has a command that we can use to install the editor. I'm just going to copy that. Go ahead and open up your command prompt. I'm using PowerShell here. I'm going to paste that in there and just hit Enter. OK, there you go. So it's installed. It's telling me I can invoke the tool now using the command mgcb-editor. OK, so I can actually type that, mgcb-editor and give it a second here and it'll come up. All right, so there's the actual editor itself and I can see that it's, it's installed. But instead of having to come to the command line every time I wanna run this, I'm gonna go ahead and register the editor with Windows. Okay, so if we go back to the website here, it's telling us that after installing, um, we can register this and then it'll be available through Windows and it'll actually become the default app for any MGB files, MGCB files, okay? So let's just go ahead and copy this command. And we're going to paste it in here, and we're going to run that. All right, and so now it's telling us that the MGCB editor is associated with .mgcb files in Windows. And we can actually run the MGCB editor now um, by going to our Start menu. And it should be in here. So if I type M, there it is. Actually, I, ty I just typed M, and that was the first thing that came up. So we have the MGCB editor. I can click on that and tell it to run. And now we don't need to use the command line anymore to bring up the editor. Okay, so I can go ahead and close the command line. Okay, so let's go back to our project. Uh, the next thing we want to do is actually add the uh, monogame content builder file into our project. So inside our project, I'm going to right click on the project title and I'm going to add a new folder. I'm going to call this content. 
All right, and this is where our content file is going to reside. Now that we have that folder, we're going to go back to our content editor. We're going to tell it we want to create a new content file. And then all we have to do is find the location where we want to put it. And actually, it came up right where I wanted it. And you can see there's the content. So just look for this content folder. That's all you're doing. Just find the content folder. And inside the content folder, you can see this. We're going to save this as an MGCB file. And I'm just going to call this content. And we're going to hit save. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and build this. It's telling me, okay, there's there's nothing in there. Um, I don't actually have any content in here. But once I built the file, you can look over here. Um, it actually has some items inside here now. So it should show us the content. There we go. So the moment I hit build on my content uh, editor, so I built the content file, all of this was added to my project. Okay, so now we have our content file in our project and we should be able to add things to it. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure everything is working just like we want. Okay, there we go. And so that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's how you get a model game project up and running without having the templates. Now there's one more thing we need to do inside our project. We need to tell the game class where the content folder is located. Now the content folder is always going to be relative to where the executable file is actually residing. So the only thing we need to do is bring up the content manager. So that'll just be content. And so it's inside the game class, it's called content. And then we're going to tell it the root directory. This, uh, this root directory is completely relative to the executable file of your application. And so all we have to do is tell it the name of the folder itself. And over here, that's just the content folder. So we're just going to pass in content here as a string. And then I'm just going to add a few more things that I like to have for my model game projects. Um, I like to have is fixed time step set to true. And then I also like to have the mouse visible uh, when I create a new project. So that should be everything right there. We can go ahead and, and run this and make sure everything looks good. Um, it's not actually doing anything, but we have our content. Um, we have our content all set up and we have a model game project ready to go. So that's pretty much it for how you set up a model game project. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to now add some things to our project to make sure everything's working fine. So first of all, I'm going to add a sprite batcher. And I'm just going to call this sprites. Um, inside load content, I'm going to create the new sprite batcher. Okay, and we just need to pass in the graphics device. All right, so our sprites uh, batcher is set up. Let's go ahead and go down to our draw command. We want to draw something. So we're going to begin sprite batching. So with sprites, you have to begin batching first. And I'm just going to use all of the default settings for the begin function. And then we need to end batching. So be in between the begin and end functions here for batching, we're just going to add all of our draw calls. And right now I don't have anything to draw. So let's go ahead and go back to our content manager. I'm going to add something to draw. I just right clicked on the content file and I want to add something new. So this will be a new item and this is going to be a sprite font description. So usually what I do when I'm defining a sprite font, I give the name of the font and then the size of the font I'm going to use. So I'm going to call this console 16. Let's go ahead and create that. Now we need to open this up to make sure that we are um, using the correct type of font that I want to use. Um, to do that, all I did was double click on this itself, the sprite font descriptor, and it opened it up here in Visual Studio. And instead of Arial, we're going to change this to Consolas. And then for the size, we're going to make it 16. Uh, make sure you hit the Save button, and then you can close this. And then all we have to do is build the content. So up here, we're going to go ahead and build everything. So now it's telling me that the build was succeeded, zero failed. And I can, uh, since we're not going to be using the content editor anymore, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and bring the sprite font in. So inside of our class field for our game, I'm going to create a uh, sprite font. Um, inside our content, let's go ahead and load the sprite font. So um, we'll use the content manager. We're going to load content. This is going to be a sprite font. And we just need to tell it the name of the sprite font. So it's just going to be whatever I gave it before. So it's uh, that'll be our name right there. And then now that I have the sprite font, I can go ahead and draw something with the sprites. So I want to draw a string, uh, pass in the font. And then let's just give it some text here real quick. I'll define that in a second. So the position is just going to be 0, 0. It's going to be at the top left of the screen. And then I'm just going to make it a white color. We could put something in here like uh, hello world or let's call this mono game desktop app uh, without templates. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that and we'll make sure everything's working just fine.
Oh, right. And it's giving us a no val it's giving us a null value exception. Um, I didn't actually so up here I called the loading function, but I did not actually assign it to our sprite font. Okay, so let's go ahead and assign that to our font. So we just set font equal to whatever we load from the content manager. And let's go ahead and restart that. And I think it should be good. Okay, there we go. So we have a mono game desktop project and we created this without templates and we're able to use the content uh, builder and the content editor.